In this episode, we're gonna dive into what the H2 database is and how to use it in our Spring Boot application. Okay, so I got this question from a student and he actually wanted to know what H2 was, how to get it set up in your Spring Boot application, and how to configure it, and actually how to jump into the H2 console was, uh, I think, his specific question. So let's take a look at this. For those of you who don't know, the H2 database engine is a Java SQL database, and uh, it's very lightweight, which makes it very fast. It's open source. Um, we have embedded and server modes, and this is an in-memory database. So this makes for a perfect candidate for uh, our development environment. What in-memory means is every time that we start it up and shut it down, any data that we've persisted to that database is not going to show up the next time we start our application up. So it's really good for just development and testing, but it makes it easy because we don't have to go through all these hoops of you know, setting up some type of database for something that we just want to like test out. And so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to look at H2. We're going to create a new Spring Boot project, but I'm also going to show you how you can just kind of add this to an existing project. We'll fire it up. We'll create an entity and then we'll go ahead and jump into the uh, H2 console just so you can see it. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. We're going to start a new project here in IntelliJ. We'll create a new project. Uh, we're using Java 8. Next, let's call this. And we'll leave all these the same. So what we're going to choose here is just web. And we're going to go into SQL. And what we want is we want JPA um, because we're actually going to need to either select JPA or JDBC um, just because um, Spring Boot can auto configure uh, the embedded H2 or HSQL or Derby databases um, and that makes it so we don't have to provide any connection URLs. Uh, we simply include the dependency and we're up and running. So we're using JPA here and we're going to select the H2 database. So that's all we need. We're going to click next. We're in boot. We'll say H2 demo and let's finish. So the first thing we're going to do when we fire up this app is we need to go ahead and create a entity. So there are a couple ways to get data into uh, our H2 database. Uh, we could include some SQL files that include uh, schema or data or schema and data. And if you want to write uh, just straight SQL files, you can do so. Those would get dropped into the resources folder. In my case, I don't really feel like writing SQL, so what I'm going to do is actually write. Um, we're gonna do that. So we're going to come in and actually create a package here. We're going to say domain, and in our case, I'm going to create a new domain object. So uh, let's go ahead and create. Uh, let's just say a subscriber. So a subscriber is like our email list subscriber, and in this case, our might have a long ID. Um, sorry, I'm used to writing Groovy these days. So um, let's say we had a first name, private string last, private string email. Okay, so those are our only uh, fields that we're going to use. We're going to drop in um, a Java uh, persistence entity here. And we're going to say that this is our ID, and we want that to be a generated value. So this is pretty much what our domain object is going to look like. Nothing crazy going on here. I'm going to create a getter and setter for everything in here. And that should be good. And let's just do this. Uh, so also, if you've been watching my videos, you probably know um, most of the time, I would probably just use Lombok for this, but just to keep it simple here and keep our dependencies simple, we'll go ahead and create this. So now I have a domain object, and what else do I need? I need a repository, so let's go ahead and actually, I'm just going to drop this in the same. And 
this is actually that there. And this is of type, uh, what was a subscriber? And that's long. And that should give us everything we need there. Okay, so now we have our subscriber domain object. We have subscriber repository, which will allow us to uh, quick, quickly go ahead and save off records. Uh, I guess the one more thing here I'm going to need is a constructor. So I'm going to need a constructor with all three of those. Um, yep, that should give us that. So I'll just pass in a first name, a last name, and an email, and we can save it off. So now, real quickly, what I want to do is go ahead and add these. Uh, let me see, do I have that? Yeah. So I'm going to add a command line runner, which is going to give me the ability to um, write on startup. Just go ahead and add some data. So I'm going to pull in this um, subscriber repository. repository. And what we want to say is repository.save. And we're going to say new subscriber, and that's going to take a first name, a last name, and an email address. And that should be it. Um, okay, I think that's it, but we'll jump in and look at it in a second. So those are kind of the minimal components to get our application up and running. So what I want to do is jump into the Palm real quick just to show you what happened here. When we selected JPA, we got this uh, starter JPA. Again, we kind of need that. Uh, some of the auto configuration for H2 behind the scenes is going on there. And then we selected web, so we're using that as well. Then down here is our dependency for our H2 database, com.h2 database, H2, and that scope is runtime. So now if you're using an existing project and you want to go ahead and add this to it, all you need to do is drop this dependency in. If you're already using JPA, then you're good to go. So this is the dependency that you'll need to add. Now before we fire this up, we're going to need to go into our application.properties and do a couple of things. So first off, by default, the H2 console is not enabled. So if you just start typing H2, you will get some uh, IntelliSense here that's going to help us out. And you'll see that the h2 console.enabled is false by default. And we want to go ahead and make that true. Um, and then you'll see the path for that is h2 console. And that's actually okay. We're going to leave that as a default. So as long as we enable it, we should be able to go ahead and run our application now. And um, once we have it up and running, we can basically go to localhost 8080 slash and then h2 console, which is what's going to allow us to jump into basically a virtual console that shows us the database and shows us, you know, tables and we can get a visual representation of our data and, and look at columns and everything. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, let's jump in here. And so let's go ahead and go localhost 8080. I'm just going to make sure our app starts up. There's our default error page. Now we're going to go to H2 console, and that's going to put us into the console, but we got to actually log into this first. So the important thing here is this JDBC URL. So we'll look at changing this in a second, but by default, if you don't do anything, um, but the first time that you run this, it should come up as test DB. And this test DB is the default data source that a Spring Boot application uses. So this is what we're going to connect to. So you can test your connection. It's going to be fine if you connect to it. Now we can see our subscriber table. So what this tells me is our entity was picked up. And hopefully we went ahead and uh, inserted a row in here. So here is the subscriber table. These are all the fields in the table. Um, and then what we can do is when I clicked on that, here's where we can actually write out some SQL statements and test them against our database. So here I'm just going to go ahead and hit the run. And this is the SQL that was produced, select star from subscriber. And here's our one row that we went ahead and inserted. 
So that's pretty good. I just want to show you one more thing. If you come back into your application.properties and you don't want your data source to be called testDB, uh, you can set up spring.datasource.name and let's call this subscribers. So now if we go ahead and restart this, we're going to go back to the console. It's going to ask us to log in again. The only thing we're going to change is that uh, JDBC URL. At the very end, instead of the default data source being testDB, we're going to change that to subscribers. And um, those are a couple things that I do uh, pretty much in every app that I'm starting with. I go ahead and enable the H2 console. I might even set up my own console path. And then I go ahead and change the uh, data source um, based on what my app is. So let's go ahead and minimize that. And if we come back here and go to Council. And so now we're going to change this to our data source name, which is subscribers, connect. And there's that. And there it is. So again, this is an in-memory database. So remember, anything we do, uh, especially right, you know, right now when we use the command line runner, we're just inserting some data on startup. Uh, if we were to go ahead and make changes to that data in uh, runtime, um, even right now, if we were to go ahead and add a new subscriber right here in the uh, SQL statement, uh, once we went ahead and stopped our application and restarted it, that data would no longer be there. So this is strictly for uh, development use only, uh, but it's a really handy tool to have. And I love this little H2 count, so just to give me a quick um, instant feedback on what's going on in my application. So uh, I can't remember who asked me this question on the um, in my course, so I'm sorry, I forgot your name, um, but I'll go ahead and go back and look for it and post this to it. But I really hope this helped out. H2 is awesome, it's easy to get up and going. And it's really easy to just jump in this console and, and kind of look at what's going on in your application. So I hope you found this uh, useful. Please give me that thumbs up below. Subscribe to the channel. And leave me some feedback. What are you guys looking to do? What, are, what problems are you running into? I'd love to make more videos around what, what challenges you guys are facing. So uh, let me know what you think. And I hope you guys have a great day.